I'm Teresa Caraggio, and this is Third Paradigm. Today, I'm going to be responding to Russell Brand's interview of Jeremy Gilbert called, Is There Any Point to Left-Wing Politics? To do this, I'll be using comedian Lee Camp's Four Levels of Reality from an article that he put in Sheer Post. And I'll be adding two of my own and then analyzing education, something that Jeremy talks about using those six different levels of reality. I'll also be referring to John Taylor Gatto's analysis, and I'll be applying that then to politics and asking, does politics even exist? So at the end, I'll be uh, answering a question that Jeremy raises, which is, can people get more of what they want through uh, left-wing politics? And my answer is, maybe not. So let's get started. To begin, I just want to say that when I researched Jeremy, one thing I found out is that he, as a DJ, is part of the Lucky Cloud Sound System and Beauty and the Beat, which put on dance parties throughout East London and is really a reason I want to visit now. So that's an exciting uh, correlation to have found. I also found out that he has done different experiments in non-traditional education by taking education out of the university. And I'm in Santa Cruz where one of the things that we've had is called Penny University. It was popular during the 60s, 70s, 80s. Um, and someone named Paige Smith, who was a professor at the university, started it. And it just became a place where the big questions could be discussed and could be discussed in a, in, in a, a setting that was convivial, that was uh, conducive to um, using analysis and getting to bigger answers. So I think that's an exciting thing that he's doing. The most important thing that I think we can be doing with our time is honing our ability to think clearly. And so I'm very interested in Jeremy's ideological critiques, looking at things from the perspective of the ideology and how that relates to everything else. And so in my, um, in my analysis, I want to start with Lee Camp. So Lee Camp is someone who does comedy news, something we who love Russell all uh, are in favor of, and he does a show called Redacted Tonight. In his article on Sheer Post, he talks about the four layers of reality and why we're only allowed to talk about one. So the first layer of reality he puts as, is Trump or Biden going to win? And that's the level at which the news stops. His second level, he says, is the oligarchs will always win, no matter who's president. And that goes into a deeper level that we never get to in the news. The third is that capitalism will eventually own everything and nature will lose, the planet will burn. That's not something that we ever get to. And then his fourth layer is the deeper questions like, what is money anyway? And what the fuck are nation states? And what difference does it make whether you were born on this side of a line in the sand and I was born on the other? So those are those are the questions at which I generally start my analysis. I'd add three different sub areas to that. One is the historical context. How did something come about, say, like money or nation states? The second would be to connectualize it to other ideas. How does this affect what's happening over here? And um, education has what I call silo knowledge, where you don't ever connect the dots. So I think we need to be connecting those dots. And then I would say the third is 
a global comparison. Are things being done differently somewhere else? And what are the results of that? So those are all part of level four. But level five, I think, goes deeper. I think it goes into what is our purpose as a society? And what is morality? How do we define our relationships with other people and make our, uh, our position ethical? What are we inherently hierarchical or are we equal? Those are all, I think, at the level of five, but still not at what I would call six, which is what is the ultimate reality? And does meaning exist or do we invent meaning? So for instance, when we look at schools, they don't ever discuss that sixth level of, of meaning unless you're in some university class that uh, is giving you credit to do idle speculation. But in reality, to, you know, coin a phrase <laughs> or to use that ironically or <laughs> however we put it, in reality, that's the place we have to start. Are we going to entertain the possibility that meaning exists independent of our perception of it? Because if it does, then the more effective we're going to be is the better that we're actually perceiving the reality. And if we assume that we're creating reality, then we are in a hierarchical system rather than one where there is a, a natural um, ability to access that meaning. So let's look at education and how education fits into that. When I have been doing my uh, pursuits, education has been a really important factor to me and examining what its purpose has been. So let's look at that first level of education. The first level might be looking at, should education be as expensive as it is? Should we be going into debt for things like this? And so someone who I think has done really interesting work on that is uh, Alan Michael Colling with the student loan scam. So that would be looking at a very useful form of education. The second level might be, should there be a centralized curriculum? Should this be comp competitive in a way that, uh, that forces us to get working papers by going into debt? Now, someone else who's done interesting work along that is Anya Kamenitz, who wrote DIYU, which is Edupunks, Edupreneurs, and the Coming Transformation of Higher Education. So those are all useful. So then we could go to what was compulsory schooling designed for? Should schooling be mandatory? Should, what is, um, what is this purpose and how does it relate to uh, what kinds of citizens, what we think of as what kind of self-governance people are capable of. And then we get to another level of, uh, of our morality, of our purpose, of our relationships with each other, and then moving on to things like what is the ultimate reality and does meaning exist? So the person who I think has done the most interesting work on... Uh, on, on mass schooling and, uh, and looking into the historical context of that is John Taylor Gatto, who wrote Dumbing Us Down. Uh, another one of his books is Weapons of Mass Instruction. And the one that goes really into the detail of the history is an underground history of American education. And uh, an, an intimate investigation into the prison of modern schooling. 
So his story is that he was a school teacher for, uh, for 30 years. And in the year that he won the New York State uh, Teacher of the Year Award, he wrote an op-ed for the New York Times called I Quit, I Think. And uh, they published it, you know, by happenstance, two weeks after he actually did make up his mind to quit. So this is the beginning of that. Government schooling is the most radical adventure in history. It kills the family by monopolizing the best times of childhood and by teaching disrespect for home and parents. The whole blueprint of school procedure is Egyptian, not Greek or Roman. It grows from the theological idea that human value is a scarce thing, represented symbolically by the narrow peak of a pyramid. And then he goes on to say, in 30 years of teaching kids rich and poor, I almost never met a learning disabled child, hardly ever met a gifted and talented one either. Like all school categories, these are sacred myths created by human imagination. They derive from questionable values we never example, examine because they preserve the temple of schooling. That's the secret behind short answer tests, bells, uniform time blocks, age grading, standardization, and all the rest of the school religion punishing our nation. There isn't a right way to become educated. There are as many ways as fingerprints. We don't need state certified teachers to make education happen. That probably guarantees it won't. So John Taylor Gatto goes into looking at the 19th century in the United States as a time when there was confidence that people were capable of governing themselves and people were self-educated and literacy was extremely high. All of these things have degenerated as people have been forced into schools, which is what happened. Children were forced at gunpoint into schools that their parents didn't want and that they didn't want. This hasn't been something that created equality. This is something that's actually created hierarchy. And what he calls it is mental colonization, that this has been a way of standardizing the mind so that we believe that those right answers exist out there. We're just not qualified to actually think about things for ourselves. I really recommend uh, these books for anyone who wants to see why we're accepting information with so little critical thought these days. Um, I think that this concept and this distrust of ourselves and our ability to think starts with this kind of school system. And there are many false dichotomies in here. One of them is that either you have mass compulsory schooling or you have homeschooling for the elite. Um, and that's not true. We could have communities where we're setting our own curriculum and where it's fun, where it isn't something that, uh, that has been turned into a chore, where it's something, in fact, that maybe kids need to earn the right to do by being good citizens of their own families. So we can reinvent education. There's another false dichotomy, which says that you either have this hierarchy of ideas based on authority, or it's all the same. Everyone's opinion is equally valuable and no one's ideas are better than any others. That is simply not true. Someone who has been studying an issue for a long time, who's bringing facts to it, who's bringing logic to it, should be higher in our hierarchy of ideas. And so that's not, um, I don't think we should abandon the idea that ideas are better and that we should be studying and learning from those who have the natural authority of 
using their own minds in a way that resonates with us. So now let's go to politics and the question of whether politics exists. So the first thing I say is you always have to define your terms. When we say, is there any point to left-wing politics? What is left-wing to begin with? In my episode, Need, Greed, and the 3P for Third Paradigm, I say that capitalism represents greed and we have socialism as representing need, but neither is a system of reciprocity. And what we need to be doing is considering reciprocity as a design rather than getting into that false dichotomy. And now what about politics? When we say the word politics, we're not talking about the discussion of policy. So for instance, you know, in, uh, in, in our hometown, my hometown, if we were to talk about things at that first level, we might be saying, oh, we have to make sure that there's no cronyism in how contracts are given out in the, um, in, in the city. And so everything has to be put out to bid. Therefore, you may get tires on the school bus that are made from Firestone, who owns third generation slaves in their rubber plantation in Liberia. So that's not part of the discussion. That's way up in a whole different level. But what we're dealing with and what uh, local communities, the only thing that they can deal with is that very superficial layer. So we're not really talking about trade policies. Should we only be trading with other states that or communities that have the same standards for human respect and respect for the environment that we do? That would be politics. What we have is personalities. Who do we like? Who do we think is going to represent our interest? And so if you had something like, when, so when Jeremy says that he thinks that if people were to say join the Labor Party, that they could get more of what they want and that what they want is a good thing. I'm not so sure because what I think people want under our system and under our way of thinking is that they want to dismantle the hierarchy from the top. They want the pyramid to be flattened so that they're not using their time to serve the oligarchs and the masters, but they don't really want to look at the pyramid leading up to them and why it is that other people are using their labor and their resources to serve our interest. So can you get more of what you want through left-wing politics? Only if what you want is to not be a servant, but have your own slaves. We have to examine our own contradictions and come to terms with wanting something that is ethically possible. <sighs> Thank you. This is so exciting. And I love all the things that Jeremy and Russell have given me to think about in this episode, uh, most of which I have barely touched on. If you're enjoying this and want to go deeper, here's another video that is uh, along the same lines. And here's a playlist that is discussing these ideas of ideology and equality. And I'm really hoping that people who like talking about these things and thinking at levels four, five, and six will subscribe. Thank you.